Thank you for joining us today. Good afternoon to everyone this afternoon. Absolutely. Sure. This is Mike, and my name is Corbin. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys are new to watching our live events, uh, we are Life Data Labs, uh, Life Data Labs, and we are the the makers of Farrier's Formula, one of the uh, most well known hoof supplements uh, in in the world. Absolutely, Corbin. In fact, uh, the Life Data Labs has been around for many many years now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and Farrier's Formula, uh, if you don't know this, is the number one hoof supplement. Uh, by the farrier industry in the U.S., you know. Absolutely. And, and surveys that have been done by the American Farriers Journal. Absolutely. Um, and so what we do in these live events is really this is our opportunity to reach out to you, um, ask you guys questions, uh, help educate, uh, talk to you guys about our research, what we figured out, and what we've studied through our research on a lot of these problems. And, of course, today we're going to talk about dry hoofs and summer care mm -hmm. we're going to talk about the weather to some extent <laughs> absolutely mm -hmm. and i know here in alabama sure. it's been it's been a hot one yep and extremely dry not only here in in alabama but across the u.s even the uk absolutely absolutely sure yeah, uk is what the hottest that they've had in recorded history i noticed that yes so yes. uh so we know right now sure. one of the big problems a lot of you are facing is keeping those hoofs from becoming too dry um, and then also making sure that your horse is sweating properly, right. uh, that the horse isn't becoming overheated. And mm -hmm. then there's just a lot of problems that can occur in the summer. Um, and we're going to talk about that today. Uh, of course, we're going to have some fun as well, right? Um, if you Again, if you've never joined us before, we're a little bit laid back. Uh, so you can feel free to, uh, to comment and, um, and ask questions. In fact, let us know where you're watching from. Uh, if you're watching today, drop a comment below. Let us know where you're watching from. Um, also, don't forget to uh, give the live stream a, a like uh, and share it with your friends. Uh, that always helps us and, and uh, of course, um, allows us to help more horse owners. Um, but in the, in the meantime, Mike, you want to talk about some of the contests we have going on today? Oh, yeah. In, in, in fact, uh, as we go through the presentation, number one, we've got three questions that mm -hmm. we're going to ask. Uh, and these questions will deal with the presentation itself. And when we ask the question, we'll have two minutes to respond back. A winner will be selected at that point in time. And our package is right here, Corbin, if you want to point that out to, to those winners. Absolutely. And before, and before I forget, um, unfortunately, with the contest, they are for the U.S. only. Um, I know we have uh, Canada joining us today. We've got the U.K. joining us today. Um, and so just unfortunately due to those pesky international giveaway laws, uh, we're just unable to, to um, offer giveaways to, to other countries. Um, so those are for the U.S. only. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, I know that's unfortunate, but we still have some really good information and we still can have a lot of fun. Um, but for our trivia giveaway, which again, as Mike said, we're going to ask three questions. Uh, you'll have two minutes and uh, we're going to have this prize pack right here. Uh, we've got the Compose, which, which is, is a, sure. a supplement to help, a uh, calming supplement, right? Mm -hmm. So if you've got a horse that may get a little nervous around the farrier or dental appointment or even trailer uh, trailering or tra uh, trailer training, uh, Compose is a great option. Again, it's all natural. It's, it's not a sedative. Um, it's just going to help take off that, mm -hmm. take, it's going, take some of that calming right. in effect. It's there. going to mellow the horse out. Absolutely. And the horse can still fully function. Absolutely. Uh, we've got a brand new t-shirt design. I like the color too. Absolutely. A little mm -hmm. bit of a lighter green than our usual. Uh, but we have this brand new t-shirt that'll be included in the package. Uh, a bottle of the Farrier's Finish, which is going to be talked about quite we frequently are. today. Mm -hmm. It's very important for keeping those hoofs from becoming dry. Uh, so that's uh, that's going to be a really good win for, for whoever's going to win that today. Um, and then the hoof clay. Mm -hmm. So we have three people and they're going to win all three of those. Mm -hmm. Uh, or one of those, but the whole package. And um, and again, that is for, for the U.S. only. Uh, and then we're also going to have a grand prize giveaway, uh, which is going which starts today. That link is actually going at the bottom of your um, bottom of your page. And uh, that's going to run all the way until Monday at midnight. Mm -hmm. And then Tuesday, we're going to go live and, and announce a winner. So if you're not watching this live, I know we've had a lot of people not able to make it. Um, and we're planning on watching it later. So if you are watching it later, uh, you have until Monday to to, to enter, enter in that okay. grand prize giveaway. 
Um, so please, please enter that. We've got a secret code, which I'll give a little bit later on in the presentation. Um, but that's going to be a, a really great grand prize. Uh, we'll announce that again, like I said, Tuesday. And, um, and again, that is, again, for the U.S. only. So, um, well, Mike, I know that uh, we've got a lot of people waiting to, to get to started. To get started, okay. Um, and so, uh, are you ready to jump in? We're ready to jump in, exactly. And, uh, of course, I jokingly said we're going to be talking about the weather, but we are going to be talking about the weather. We're going to talk be talking about how dry it is, number one, how hot it's been, and we're going to talk about how that directly affects not only the foot of the horse, but the entire horse itself, the, the health of the horse. Absolutely. And of course, we're going to start off by talking about the effects on the foot to begin with. And let me just grab one right here right quick. And of course, uh, a good quality foot is like having a good set of tires under your car. Absolutely. If you have bad tires and blowouts and you've got problems, and that's true with the horse itself. Now, dry weather is going to affect the foot of the horse, yes. It's going to affect the whole horse, yes. And we're going to talk about some management things here in just a few minutes that we need to put into play uh, to help address uh, th this particular situation and lessen the effect that heat and the dryness is going to have on the horse itself. Of course, one of the things when we talk about dry conditions there, and Mr. Will, if you will put up slide number one for me before I forget, uh, we've got a couple of feet here. Uh, the one on the left, as you look at it, is a typical thoroughbred foot there Absolutely. in itself. Uh, that uh, horse is going through some dry conditions. We have some cracking that's going on there. Of course, as you can see, this horse is right at the point where it needs to be reset. Uh, the other foot on the right-hand side is a quarter horse there. Uh, the horse has had shoes uh, in the past. Uh, this is an extremely dry, brittle foot there. And of course, as you can see, uh, the horse has actually pulled the shoe and in the process of pulling the shoe is actually torn part of the hoof wall away. So we have created another problem in itself besides losing the shoe, we've lost part of the hoof wall, which is the horse has got to regenerate. Of course, that's also opened that foot up for bacteria mm -hmm. to enter and that sets us up for secondary issues as well. Absolutely. So what happens to this hoof capsule during those dry periods, number one, is this hoof capsule, it wants to contract. Mm -hmm. In other words, if it was wet, it goes the other direction, mm -hmm. it expands. But under dry conditions, it contracts, it hardens. And at that point in time, especially if we're on a hard surface, then that makes it very easy for that to hoof wall, to chip, to crack. Uh, and if we're not doing a good job in keeping that hoof capsule balanced, then a lot of times we're going to end up some quarter cracks uh, and, and things along this, this line itself. So that's one of the things that takes place. The contraction of the hoof capsule, chipping, cracking is going on. Uh, that horse is at a higher risk of losing the shoe, as we see here in this particular slide itself. And then, of course, that horse is very subject to becoming lame as well, especially if this horse has thin soles. With dry conditions, the ground is extremely hard there, and a lot of times that's going to put more pressure on the sole and against the coffin bone itself, and that horse can be a little bit ouchy at that point as well. Absolutely. So that's essentially what happens to uh, that hoof capsule during dry periods itself. Okay. And, and just a little bit later on, we're going to talk about a product that's very beneficial in helping to uh, alleviate that dryness and that contraction that takes place there. Okay. Uh, well, Mike, I know, you know, we have a lot of people with these, with these dry hoofs right now, and we mm -hmm. have a lot of questions regarding hoof oils, hoof dressings, hoof conditioners. Uh, can we talk about sure. the, the difference of those? What, what yeah. 
and, and kind of go into that yeah. a little bit? Uh, and, and, you know, anytime you go to your tax store, your farm store, your stockist, or wherever, there's a multitude of different products you're going to find on the shelf. It may be identified as a hoof oil. It may be a hoof dressing. It may be a hoof conditioner, or it may be a hoof cream. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm going to make the statement that Probably all of them have their place, mm -hmm. okay? But there's two things that I would like to point out to you, number one, and that is that when you make your selection, you need to take a look at the ingredients that's in those products. Absolutely. And if there's anything as far as ingredient-wise that's going to be caustic, that's going to burn, that's going to harm or kill hoof tissue, I would avoid that. In other words, if you can't use it on your own self, I would not use it on the horse, period. I would not use it on the hoof capsule, period. Because when we burn and when we kill hoof tissue, a lot of times we're setting ourselves up for a cycle of problems to come and to happen down the road. So, with that being said, uh, be mindful of what's in the product. Make sure it's non-caustic and that it will not burn or kill that hoof tissue itself. Now, one of the products that we have here at Life Data Labs, and you've already pointed that out, and that is a liquid product that's actually called Farrier's Finish there. Mm -hmm. And if you've never used Farrier's Finish on a dry foot, you'll love the product, okay? And if I could take just a minute, I'm going to demonstrate how we use Ferris formula, I mean Ferris finish itself. And of course, uh, I've got another bottle here that's opened. Of course, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to shake the product up. Of course, we mentioned non-caustic. Now, it is a non-caustic product there, okay? You can actually put it on yourself and it's not going to burn or kill hoof tissue. Now, the way that I like to use the product is uh, I have a secondary container, and I have just a, a me an old measuring cup uh, that we used to put in pails here <laughs> yeah. several years ago. And I just come in here, and I squirt out enough of this product, just like you see, and then I will actually keep my brush, which is a soft bristle, bristle brush in itself, and after we have picked up the foot, we're going to come in here and we're going to clean either mm -hmm. side of the frog. We're going to brush it out. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this product and we're going to cover everything underneath as far as the sole. And if we happen to have a little thrush issue, we're going to really work that into the commissures, the central part of the frog as well. And once we get the sole covered, then we can let the foot back down. And then we're going to cover the entire hoof wall itself with Farrier's Finish, now, as I think you it's see important, here. important, too, to point out, you can see what Mike's doing. is He's literally covering the entire hoof mm -hmm. with, with the Farrier's Finish. There's really no limit to what that can be put on. Correct. Uh, a lot of those caustic materials will tell you, you know, not to put it on certain areas of a hoof, um, you know, not to not to of course not to get on your own skin and, and whatnot but that covers the entire hoof still going to allow the hoof to to breathe right um, and that's going to work with those phospholipids in mm -hmm. the hoof sure. to, to help maintain that moisture that we want to keep and, and you brought out another good point too that i failed to mention a while ago never put anything on the hoof capsule that blocks oxygen absolutely that capsule has to breathe absolutely and, and there's a form of uh bacteria that thrives in the absence of oxygen and that form of bacteria is very conducive to a thrush problem, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a white line problem in Absolutely. itself. Okay, so be very mindful Absolutely. of that. And then especially if you're fighting against those dry hoofs and you're getting mm -hmm. those cracks and, the, and those different hoof problems mm -hmm. that come along with those dry hoofs and then you cut off the oxygen that, again, like you said, just breeds that bacteria, which then just invades through those cracks and, and so on, and um, you just have created more problems. Mm -hmm. So Farrier's Finish, and we haven't pointed this out either, it's an antimicrobial okay. too. So one of the things that uh, we have to deal with in the environment 
that we're experiencing right now is the dry conditions and ever present is bacteria. Mm -hmm. So this is going to help fight off any bacteria that would want to invade and set up a problem within the capsule itself. And it's also going to condition that hoof capsule if you want to refer to it that as that or you can say that it's going to help regulate the moisture within the hoof capsule itself. And it does that, as you mentioned, through a phospholipid compound. And it, through this compound, it has the ability to help shed excess moisture or to retain the needed moisture. Now, if you're under extreme dry conditions, I like to use it at least every other day. And if you'll make at least two to three applications, you're going to see a difference in that length of time when you use Farrier's Finish on a capsule that has contracted. And if you got chips and cracks going on, really concentrate with your brush in those particular areas as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that, that's Farrier's Finish. And then while we're talking about, we also have the hoof clay itself, Corbin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the hoof clay is a... Uh, it's a clay-like, putty-like uh, substance, and it's for specific problems within the foot of the horse itself. It's a great product for thrush. It's a great product for wall separation. It's a great product to fill in your old nail holes after a reset. It's a great product to use underneath the shoe when that shoe is being reset as well. So, Absolutely. And you can use both of them in combination with each other use the clay first and then finish it off with the fair's finish Absolutely. thing. Yeah. Now I know this was a this was a question that we had uh, through Facebook um, but how often do you want to put on uh, these you know like say farrier's finish or if they choose a different topical mm -hmm. uh, how often do you want to put that on the hoof during this dry time? Uh, at least every other day I would do that. Now fair's finish it's safe enough that you could use every day if you wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. But minimum under adverse conditions every other day. Okay. okay. So I guess a lot of it also kind of depends on what what you're seeing in the environment currently. That's absolutely uh, that's absolutely right. And if everything was normal, uh, then I like to use the finish at least once a week as a preventative type measure. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But if you're seeing those just dry, dry, dry times. Uh, or even going through that wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry, um, that farrier's finish is really going to come in handy uh, and sure. using that f as frequently as, as you can. Yeah. Um, yeah, so something we always talk about is, you know, don't don't wait until the farrier comes. Uh, you know, pick up that hoof every day mm -hmm. and, and, and apply that. Um, it's easy to do, as, as Mike saw, and, you know, he had the brush and the container, but we've had some people just use their hands to, sure, to put it right. on. And, and so it's pretty easy to use. Um, but so, let, you know, when it comes to those dry hoofs and, and hoof cracks, you know, of course, we want to make sure we have correct maintenance, you know, that we are picking up the hoof and picking it clean. On a so daily on. basis, we, yes. We want to make sure that there's correct moisture balance and that we're taking care of that hoof from an environmental standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to those dry hoofs, how does nutrition play? And what does that summer diet look like okay. for the source? Okay. In fact, uh, we'll dive into that then, Corbin. Uh -huh. And uh, Mr. Will, if you'll put up slide number two, please. Uh, of course, one of the things that hot, droughty conditions is going to do, it's going to affect the forage that our horse is actually consuming. Uh, in a lot of areas, we're we having to deal with what I call some cool season grasses. And dry and hot weather is not a friend to those grasses. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of them is going to turn brown. They're going to want to dry up. And at that point in time, the uh, nutritional value of those grasses are quickly diminished. Absolutely. So we need to be mindful of what the horse is grazing, number one. We need to walk through our paddocks and our pastures to see what's there, how much is there, you know, is the horse getting enough forage, is the horse getting enough nutritionally from the, this basic diet that, that we're providing, all right? And of course, as these forages, as they diminish, then one of the things that likes to take its place is going to be weeds. 
and a lot of those weeds, a lot of times I'm afraid are going to be toxic to the horse itself. So that's one of the reasons that we need to keep on top of what's actually growing uh, in our paddocks and in our pastures, and we need to uh, work against, we need to le alleviate anything that would be toxic because the horse, if it runs out of something to graze on out there, it's going to start searching for other things to start nibbling on. And a lot of times they will start nibbling on something toxic. And of course that, that can be very detrimental to the horse itself mm -hmm. and causing all type of hoof, hoof issues in itself. And, and so at this point in time too, uh, we may need to consider, well, do we need to start adding hay to the diet of the horse at this time? And one of the easiest ways to determine that is that if you'll put out some hay uh, and if your horse will clean that up pretty quickly, uh, then that tells you, hey, there's not quite enough out there in my pasture. The horse is going to benefit from additional hay at this point in time uh, during the year. And so let's start adding hay to the diet as well. Mm -hmm. Now, you might ask, well, I don't want to give up my hay because I'm saving that for the winter months. But if you'll do the math, you're going to find that hay is going to be more economical than having to reseed and reestablish that forage uh, over a period of time then, okay? Absolutely. And of course, another thing too, we know that the basic diet of the horse is grass. And if that's the only thing that that horse is receiving, then that horse would benefit from a forage balancer. And one of those that's made here at Life Data Labs is a product called Barn Bag. Mm -hmm. And it ensures that the daily nutrient requirement of the horse is being met. It's going to complement whatever forage, whatever hay you're providing that horse at that point in time as well. Now, that brings us to another subject in itself, okay? Mm -hmm. And that is when it's extremely dry, we know we can use Ferris finish. Mm -hmm. And that's going to help take care of the outside. Mm -hmm. But we have a product called Ferris Formula. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, double strength or double strength Ferris Formula is the most economical way for you to feed it in the U.S. In the UK, it's called uh, double concentrate. Double concentrate there, Absolutely. okay. Or just there's also just the original fares formula. That is correct, right? Uh, but the double strength is more economical in the U.S. versus the original formula, okay? Now uh, another option, if you're in Canada now. Mm -hmm. is the DS Plus joint. Absolutely. That's U.S., Canada, but it's still not available in the U.K. yet. That's right. But, uh, uh, but yes, brand new to Canada. Right. So it's going to protect the foot of the horse. It has your Ferris formula in it, plus it has an added advantage in that it's going to protect the joint of the horse. Absolutely. And it is in Canada, as we've just mentioned, mm -hmm. okay? All right. So one of the other things that we can do besides Ferris finish in helping improve hoof quality in these dry conditions would be the addition of Ferrius formula to the diet of that horse. Absolutely. And what Ferrius formula is going to do, it's going to internally regrow the foot over a period of time. It's going to improve the internal aspect of the foot. And as it grows that foot out, it's going to thicken and strengthen the hoof wall. Mm -hmm. Okay, and as we grow the foot out, we're we're growing the old out. We're replacing it with new, and plus uh, thickening and strengthening the hoof wall. It's going to thicken the sole of the foot in the process. Now, if that horse was thin sole to begin with, then we're going to have some added benefit by feeding Ferris formula to the horse itself. Now, you might ask, well, how does a hoof supplement? help in dry conditions. Mm -hmm. Ferris formula has what we call phospholipids in it. Mm -hmm. It has a host of uh, fatty acids in it and amino acids and those all directly help improve that hoof wall itself. And anytime we have a good thick quality hoof wall 
that hoof capsule is going to be more resilient to cracking, to chipping. It's also going to be more resilient to uh, that capsule becoming waterlogged when everything goes wet at that point in time as well. Okay. Well, and that's a, that's a good point as well. You know, a lot of times when we talk about the hoof and consider the hoof, you know, we kind of break it up as seasonal issues. You mm -hmm. know, the summer brings this, the spring brings this, and a lot of a lot of times we don't consider the effects of what occurs in the summer will also then trigger problems in the fall. That's correct. When all the rain comes in, so mm -hmm. if you're allowing that hoof to become too dry, right. and you're having those cracks, and you're having those issues. As we get into the fall and the rain picks back up and the mud picks back up and we're going to have a whole new host of further problems in the fall. That's right. In other words, prevention is, is much easier than to have to deal with a quarter crack. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. Or chipping or cracking or losing a shoe. Absolutely. Okay? Prevention. All right? Mm -hmm. uh, some other things uh, uh, right now that's going on is, of course, uh, that horse is going to consume so much water on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Of course, the hotter it is and the more that that horse is going to sweat, the more water it's going to consume. So we need to be very mindful of our water, water troughs, number one. We need to keep those clean. Uh, if we have ponds, we need to be very mindful of those. We need to watch those. If we have a uh, any stagnant streams that that horse is watering itself out of and the water is not moving because the water supply has diminished, then there's one thing that let me bring to your attention and that's called blue-green algae. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't want that to set up in our ponds and in any type of stagnant water as well because blue-green algae can cause some serious health problems not only to humans and dogs but also to horses as well. So be very mindful of that. And of course, uh, anytime we have standing water like that, that's just uh, a great environment for the mosquito. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know that the mosquito is uh, a pest, number one, uh, but it's also a problem and then it will spread different diseases that we don't want our horses uh, to have to deal with. West Nile disease mm -hmm. is number one, okay? So we need to guard against that uh, during uh, the insect season, whether that's mosquitoes, uh, of course flies are a nuisance as well during the summer months. So we need to be uh, working toward eliminating our fly population and using some type of spray or whatever on our horses to help, uh, to keep, help keep our horses comfortable from the flies and so forth, all right? Absolutely. And I think uh, we're ready for question number one. Okay, sounds mm -hmm. great. Let me get my questions mm -hmm. over here. Should be a simple, straightforward question. Absolutely. Um, okay, again, we're, this is for our uh, first trivia question of the mm -hmm. day. We're going to have two more after this. Uh, you're going to have two minutes to answer the question correctly. Um, out of the correct answers, uh, we will randomly select someone and uh, that person will receive this little prize pack, which is the, uh, the Compose, the new t-shirt, the finish, and the clay. Uh, again, due to those pesky um, giveaway international laws, we cannot stretch, we, you know, we cannot do this internationally. So this is for the U.S. only. I uh, apologize for that. I know that's always disappointing to hear. Um, it's just something that, that we unfortunately can't control. Um, so again, this is going to be the, for the compose, the t-shirt, finish, and the clay. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first question is, during dry conditions, the hoof capsule will either, does it either contract or does it expand? You have two minutes to answer that. Does the hoof contract or does it expand in dry conditions? Um, well, while that's going on during that time, let's ask Mike some questions. Sure. Go right uh, ahead, Corbin. Again, when, you know, before we go live, we always ask Facebook to submit your questions for Mike to answer. Uh, we had several people uh, put in some questions, so, so thank you for that, uh, for, to all those who submitted questions. Um, okay, so the first question I had of the day was, uh, shod or barefoot, does it make any difference to dry hoofs? Uh, personally speaking, no. Mm -hmm. uh, dry conditions is just as detrimental to a horse that's shod versus one that's barefoot. 
Absolutely. Okay. Uh, of course, there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the horse is going to tell you, number one, whether it needs some form of protection, whether that's a shoe, whether that's a boot, when that horse is on a hard surface itself. So let, a, let the horse tell us there. Okay. Absolutely. And then if we have a barefoot horse that tends to have some thin soles, uh, then the incorporation of some various formula to help internally regrow the foot is going to help that barefoot horse as well in okay. the process itself. Yeah. Well, well let, let me ask you this. this mm -hmm. is, of course, wasn't one of the questions, but just a question of my own from, mm -hmm. from you bringing that up. Mm -hmm. Will the dry hoofs affect the shod horse more due to maybe the shoe not being able to, you, you mentioned the shoe not being able to, sure. to stay on if it becomes too dry and so In on. fact, that's a very good point in itself, Corbin. In, in fact, that would be a disadvantage during dry conditions, especially if that horse rips the shoe off, mm -hmm. because in the process, it's going to end up ripping off part of that quarter side where those nails are. Absolutely. Nine times out of 10. And then we've we seen that uh, in the earlier picture there. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, our, our time is up, but let me ask you one more question before, mm -hmm. we, uh, before we do that. Um, well, you know, we kind of went over this, and I feel like I know your answer that for this, but we did have someone ask, what, what is the best treatment that we would recommend for cracking and splitting? Uh, nutrition, mm -hmm. number one. Regrow the foot internally. Control the environmental factors, which is heat and dryness right now. Bear's finish is going to help you tremendously with that situation as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and I think that's one thing uh, you know, a lot of horse owners um, don't always consider is that those cracks don't heal. No. They have to be grown out. Right. Uh, and so if you're not, the horse isn't producing quality hoof, then that crack won't ever grow out or it'll spread into the poor hoof growth and... Sure. And, and just won't be a never ending problem. And one other disadvantage to having a crack too, it's an open point for bacteria. Absolutely. For other problems. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, well, we did have a winner. Um, and so the answer to the question during dry conditions, the hoof capsule contracts or expands, it contracts. Mm -hmm. It does. Absolutely contracts. Uh, the winner for that is Hope Keys. Congratulations, Hope. Uh, you can email us at cservice at lifedatalabs.com. Again, that is cservice at lifedatalabs.com. And I believe that email is going down there at the bottom uh, in that green bar uh, as well. Uh, but just email us. You can put in the subject line, live giveaway winner. Uh, we will need your email address and we will need uh, your t-shirt size. Mm -hmm. uh, so congratulations to you. Uh, and again, just while we're talking about the winnings and, and whatnot. Uh, of course, with Facebook, you can always have people try to spam you, try to uh, scam you. Uh, and so uh, make sure that, uh, you know, you don't answer any messages or give anybody any credit card information. We, we've had in the past, people try to pretend to be us or pretend to be other companies with with giveaways. We will only contact you through that C service email address. We will not friend you. We will not, uh, ever ask for a credit card with with these giveaways uh so just uh just a little tip there sure. and, and even these live events we've had people post links you know these live events are free are free to watch so mm -hmm. don't ever give a credit card uh to someone on facebook um okay so that's uh the end of question number one we still have two more questions plus our grand prize giveaway which we will talk a mm -hmm. little bit here yeah. at the end um all right mike let's get back into the presentation All right, well, I know we have just some, I guess, normalities when it comes to the horse. We do. And uh, let's talk about talk about some of that. You know, what, sure. what, what, what are some of the normals sure. for the horse and how can some summer affect, affect those situations? In fact, what we're going to present here now is some things that you probably already know. Mm -hmm. We just want to refresh your memory, number one. And you will see that as we get further into the presentation, why we brought these particular items up at this point in time, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the average temperature, body temperature for a horse is typically 100 degrees, we can say, or it'll range from about 99 to 101, but on average it's going to be about 100 degrees. 
and that's that's going to come into play in just a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. When we talk about heart rate, uh, in an average adult horse, we're looking at about 28 to 48 beats per minute. Mm -hmm. Of course, now there is a difference there when we take a look at the age of our horses. In a yearling, the average heart rate is somewhere between 40 and 60. So the heart rate is increased. And then when we take a look at a newborn foal, that heart rate is somewhere between 80 and 120 per minute. Mm -hmm. So that tells us that the younger the horse, the more heartbeats we're going to have. The heart rate increases there, okay? So I'm going to ask you a question, okay. Corbin, okay? And I don't mean to put you on the spot on there. On the spot, I'm ready. But of those three age groups, the adult, the yearling, and the newborn foal, which one would have the quickest or the fastest hook growth? What do you think? Um, I would say the newborn foal. That is correct because we have more blood flow. Blood flow. We have more of the metabolic process going on. We have more nutrients. We have more oxygen going to the capsule itself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. Now, what about respiration rate? At rest, the average horse uh, will take about 8 to 14 breaths, mm -hmm. somewhere in that neighborhood. If that horse was under extreme intense exercise, that could go up to 120, mm -hmm. okay? So the resting rate's about 8 to 12 under intense up to 120, all right? Water consumption. The average horse is going to consume somewhere between 5 to 10 gallons per day on average, okay? During the winter months, that same horse is going to consume more water, typically say 10 to 15 gallons per day, simply because of what it's consuming uh, tends to be a little bit drier. We're consuming hay a little more than we are during the other times of the year, so it requires more moisture. And with that being said, it's going to consume more water at that mm -hmm. point as well. Now, a horse that is exercising, mm -hmm that is competing is going to require the most water than any of these other groups here simply from the fact that that horse can actually lose anywhere from two to four gallons of sweat per hour two to four gallons per hour so if this is an endurance horse and it's going all day long and it's extremely hot and dry it's extremely important that that horse is kept hydrated uh, to keep from creating a problem in itself, okay? Absolutely. You might ask, well, how much water will the stomach of a horse hold without distending the stomach itself? And that's somewhere in the neighborhood of two to four gallons of water is what it can consume. If you take a look at the skin of the horse, which uh, involves the epidermis, the dermis, and the sub subcutaneous part, within the dermis you have your sweat glands. On average, there's 810 sweat glands per cubic centimeter uh, that you're going to find in the skin of the horse itself. Now, one of the things that uh, works against a horse, actually a horse is, whether it's idle or whether it's uh, competing, is humidity. The more humidity that we have, and say if we have 75% or greater humidity, uh, then the, the cooling system of the horse doesn't work as well if we had lower humidity. So we need to be mindful of that. Now, there are are some things that we can do to make sure that a horse is staying hydrated and we want that especially this time of the year. There's what we call a CRT test which is a capillary refill test and all we do is we're going to push our finger against the gum of the horse. We're going to determine 
how long does it take for it to return back to its normal pink color and that should be at least two seconds or less and if that is the case and that that horse has no issues there's also one other thing that we can do too and it's called the skin tint or the pinch test mm -hmm. and that was we actually grab a hold of the skin say the upper part of the shoulder lower part of the shoulder or the neck itself we pull it out and we wait to see how long it takes for it to return back to its normal position. Absolutely. Normal, that should happen immediately, okay? Absolutely. So, with all that being said, we got our trivia out of the way now. Let's ask question number two. Okay. Okay. So, question number two. All right, let me get these questions back out. Okay. This is question number two. You're going to have two minutes to answer it. And again, we will randomly select uh, one of you who got it correct. Uh, and again, this is for the U.S. only. Uh, the average temperature for the horse is what? Mm -hmm. one, 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 one figure is all you have to give. The average temperature for the horse is what? Mm -hmm. All right, you have two minutes. Okay. Uh, and in the meantime, again, we've got some of these Facebook questions for you, Mike. All right. Um, someone wants to know, uh, does aqueous cream really work? I actually done a little research on that there, okay? okay? And if you will spend some time taking a look at the ingredients mm -hmm. uh, on that particular product there, I, I know there's some folks that will use the product to help moisturize the hoof capsule itself uh, but there's actually some ingredients in the product that's going to be very detrimental to the hoof wall itself okay it can cause some damage over a period of time so gotcha mm -hmm. okay um should hoofs be treated prior to summer when more prone to dry hoofs is there something to do year round uh yes it is in fact i, I think we have kind of alluded to that uh, mm -hmm. Uh, earlier, I, I think uh, hoof supplement number one uh, to help internally regrow, grow out the old problem foot, replace it with a, mo a more resilient foot against wet weather, dry weather, and the bacteria itself, and the use of cypherous finish as a topical on the outside to control the environmental issues. So it, it's really not a seasonal thing, it's a year-round thing. It's, it's a year-round challenge. Well, and, I, and I, mentioned, I mentioned the summer problems can lead into the fall problems. That's right. But the winter problems and the spring problems can then lead into the summer problems. That's right. Uh, and so, you know, like Mike said, that, that continuous feeding of a, of a hoof supplement, the proper nutrition, um, and using that farrier's finish about once a week it's just, that's, I mean, that's what you can do preventively sure. to, to help control these problems. If you see problems with, with thrush arise or, or you can see you start having more of that uh, dry environment, more mm -hmm. heat, you can increase that barrier's finish as, as need to be. Um, but yeah, that's, that's definitely what, what, what we would recommend. Um, let's do one more question and then we'll, we'll uh, get, get to who got it correct. Um, What's better, the uh, a hoof cream, a conditioner, or an oil? Well, that's a good question, too. And, and the way that I would answer that, I would take a look at ingredients, number one. Absolutely. I think we kind of just alluded about the cream itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I take a look at, when I, take, when I consider Ferris Finish, I consider it a, a combo product. I, I consider it being more of a conditioner and an antimicrobial. So you actually have two products in one itself. Uh, another thing that we need to be very mindful of too, and we've mentioned this earlier, uh, when it comes to oils. We don't want to apply anything that's going to block needed oxygen to the hoof capsule mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I would address that question there. Absolutely, and that, like you said, it's the number one thing we want to make sure is, is that we're not blocking the oxygen, that we're not putting anything caustic on there. Right. So the ingredients play a role, and, and you know, and so always pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, um, okay, so we have a winner. Uh, and then the answer to that, what is the average temperature for the horse is 100 degrees. Right. And so look, from looking at it, we had, a, had several people in the running for this. 
uh, but we have randomly selected Katie Brown. Congratulations, Katie. You're going to win the Fairs finish, which we've talked about a lot today. Mm -hmm. uh, Hook Clay, uh, a Fairs Formula t-shirt in this brand new green, uh, as well as the Compose, which is our calming supplement. Uh, so congratulations to you. You can email cservice at lifedatalabs.com. Again, that email address is scrolling down at the bottom of your screen. Uh, in the subject line, you can put live giveaway winner. We'll need your t-shirt size and shipping address. Mm -hmm. And we'll get that right out. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Congratulations again. Uh, we've got one more trivia question. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, we still have our grand prize giveaway. And uh, that link for that has been scrolling at the bottom as well. You can enter in that contest at any point in time right now. That runs through Monday. Uh, but at the end of this presentation, we will have our secret code that you will definitely want to uh, get because that will double your chances of winning. Um, well, Mike, we've talked about in length about the temperature of the horse. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about sweating in the horse. Mm -hmm. We've talked about, of course, the dry hoofs. We've mm -hmm. talked about how this, how the summer, how this heat affects the horse, mm -hmm. but what causes the horse to cool itself? How, how, can the, how can we count on that horse to cool itself to, to maintain those temperatures? And, and that's extremely important this time of the year when the temperatures are like they are. In, in fact, uh, you can have a horse that's going to sweat just being outside in the sun itself, especially if we have some high humidity. But the horse has the ability to cool itself in really three ways, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, the first one is through respiration. Mm -hmm. That's exhaling the heat itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is through the radiant heat, which is expelled through the skin of the horse. And then the, the way that the horse has the ability to cool itself more than these first two that I just mentioned is through the process of sweating, okay? And if you, if you break down how much uh, cooling takes place as far as the respiration and the radiant cooling, that's going to be about 25% of the cooling process. When it comes to the actual sweating process, uh, that's going to be somewhere between 70 to 75%. Uh, that the horse relies on sweating to cool itself and to regulate the body core temperature. Absolutely. And of course that's extremely important. Uh, in fact, we can have a horse to get too hot. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about some of the problems that can take place uh, if that actually happens in Corbin. So, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, Mike, what causes the horse to sweat? All right, that's a good question too. And, of course, as a horse uh, is moving, as we exercise the horse, uh, for the horse to move, then we have huge muscle masses that's moving the horse itself. And, of course, uh, as the horse moves, as it exercises, there's heat that's being built up within the muscle itself. We have blood that's flowing through this mass of muscle. Uh, it's going to pick up the heat. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to travel through the lungs. Uh, part of this heat can be exhaled at that point in time. Of course, part of the blood flow is going to uh, go to the outer extremities, the skin itself, through radiant heat. Part of this heat buildup can be released at that point in time. But as we continue to exercise and as the internal temperature continues to rise in the horse, then we get to a point where the radiant and the exhaling want control mm -hmm. that rise in temperature. So the, uh, there's a gland that's called the hypothalamus. It's going to signal all these sweat glands that's found in the dermis part of the skin itself and they're going to start sweating at that point in time. And of course, uh, this sweat basically is water. It's a basically a lot of different minerals, especially uh, calcium, potassium, chloride, sodium, or whatever. A lot of times we refer to those as electrolytes mm -hmm. uh, that the horse is losing. Uh, these particular minerals plus the, the water as it is released through the sweat gland itself. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
And of course, the way that uh, this cools the horse is that as it sweats, and it's the evaporation process that actually carries the heat away from the body of the horse itself. And that's a simplified version as to what takes place and how the horse cools itself during these particular hot periods or when the horse is competing or exercising or whatever. Absolutely. Um, and just real quick, I, I know we've got a couple questions here in the comments. We're not ignoring you. Uh, here towards the end of the presentation or even at the next trivia question, we will get to those, uh, get to those questions. Uh, some of them we may end up answering as we go along. Uh, so just be patient with us. I promise you we will answer some of those questions here towards the end. Um, okay, Mike, so we talked about, you know, the sweating and the cooling and so mm -hmm. on. Um, but, of course, you know, the horse can't just come up to us and say, hey, I'm hot or I'm feeling dizzy or whatever. Sure. Uh, so how is a horse owner know that this that the horse is at risk of overheating what are some of these signs that we can be on the lookout for well the horse is going to give us some visual signs mm -hmm. and, and we need to really heed to those signs to make sure that our horse is not overheating to make sure that that horse is not approaching of having a heat stroke in mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. and we don't want to go there at all but you're going to have rapid breathing exhaling that's going to be going on okay mm -hmm. and if a horse is overheated then this uh, rapid breathing should come to a normal pretty quickly when we stop the horse uh, and if it doesn't then that's telling us that we've got a problem going on mm -hmm. the horse is overheating if the temperature stays high say 106 and above uh, for some period of time and say if, if that temperature doesn't decrease in say 12 to 30 minutes then we've got a problem that's going on that's telling us there. If that horse is depressed, if it's exhausted, we've got an issue going on. If that skin lacks the resiliency where we do the pinch test or the skin tint and that skin doesn't go back like it's supposed to, then that tells us we've got a problem going on. If we actually listen to the intestinal part of the a horse, the guts, then a lot of times there's, there's no sounds there. Mm -hmm. And that certainly tells us that we've got a problem going on at that point in time. So that's just some of the warning signs where we have a horse that's overheating. Absolutely. And we need to take immediate action at that point in time, Corbin. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Um, so so how, do we, how do we treat this? What do we, what do, we that, do? That's a very good question. What can we do for that horse that's overheating itself? Well, number one, if this horse is out in an outdoor arena, one of the one of the first things that we want to do is to get it into the shade out of the sun itself. And Mr. Will, if you'll pull up slide number four, uh, of course, one of the easiest things that we can do is we can start hosing that horse down with cool water, mm -hmm. or we can sponge the horse down with cool water itself, or we can ice the horse down with uh, ice itself. Uh, and basically we want to start where we've got a lot of veins, a lot of arteries, say the neck of the horse, the shoulders of the horse, up in that area there. And if we can, can cool down some of the arteries, the veins, uh, that's going to help cool the internal aspect of the horse itself, mm -hmm. okay? And this right here actually even brings us back a little bit to the hoofs as well. Uh, because as you know, as we are hosing down the horse and so on, especially if we're in those dry environments, mm -hmm. we're now introducing moisture. That's right. But one of the things we want to make sure that we're doing is still providing that farrier's finish because of that that dry, wet, dry, mm, wet, sure. dry, wet. And, and that's very detrimental mm -hmm. to hoof quality, that change mm -hmm. uh, from dry to wet or vice versa, okay? Uh, of course, fans on the horse to help move air. Mm -hmm. It's going to help tremendously cool the horse down. Uh, can we give the horse water at this point in time? Yes, we can. Uh, we might uh, start out with a small amount. Let's walk the horse a little bit. 
Uh, and after we do that, let's give more water and let's just repeat this process over a mm -hmm. period of time there. Uh, of course, when everything is said and done, and if a horse is okay, uh, a lot of folks will add some electrolytes back uh, to the water itself to help replace what that horse has lost during the sweating process. And if you like to use electrolytes and water, I would encourage you to have two separate watering buckets if you do that. Plain water in one, water with the electrolytes in the other one there. And then after you have done all of this, and if you're not accomplishing anything as far as cooling the horse down itself, you're in an emergency situation, and we call our vet to get some help immediately. And that's what we want to do. Absolutely. All right. Well, what do we do for, of course, we know, especially here in the summer, we have certain horses who are even at a higher risk of overheating, mm -hmm. uh, and these are our anhydrosic horses. That's right, the non-sweating horse. Absolutely. And there's a small percent of the population of horses that will have this particular issue there. They don't have the ability to sweat, or they sweat insufficiently, one of the two. And even if they sweat insufficiently, insufficiently then a lot of times it's not sufficient enough to cool the horse properly, and mm -hmm. that horse can easily overheat. And if the horse is not sweating at all, and it's in a hot, dry climate, then it's very limited as to how much it can actually compete and perform. Now, this can involve any horse, regardless of age, breed, or sex, mm -hmm. okay, as far as this particular problem itself. The problem can come on gradually, or it can come on all at one time, either way. Uh, as far as the cause of a horse uh, becoming uh, anhydrotic, we don't know, just to be quite honest with you, to be uh, straightforward with you. Uh, it could be an environmental, it could be from exercise stress, it could be metabolic, it could be hereditary, Combinations of all of those or whatever can contribute to this. Uh, but primarily, this is going to affect uh, hot, dry climates uh, more than anywhere else, okay? Mm -hmm. And if we, and, and there are some visual signs to this horse that has anhydrosis, okay? A lot of times it's going to have a slow gait. Uh, it's going to have part skin that flakes, and that's especially on the face of the horse itself. That's a, uh, that's a given in itself. We can actually have bald patches on the face of the horse that's caused by this particular problem. Uh, a lot of times these horses naturally are going to have a higher pulse rate. They're going to have a higher temperature body core rate, and they're going to have a higher respiratory rate as well. So that's why it's important to know what the normal horse has mm -hmm. so you can compare that to your horse to make sure that we don't have any issues that's going on. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, some of these uh, particular horses will sweat on a limited basis. And if that is the case, and a lot of times that's going to be underneath the jaw of the horse, uh, it's going to be along the neck of the horse, the base of the ears, uh, behind the hind legs, and, and sometimes underneath the saddle, and that's it. But it's not sufficient enough to cool the horse properly for it to fully function and to compete. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. Well, Corbin, I think we're ready for our third and final question. Okay. So, third question. Again, you have two minutes to answer this. Uh, we're going to randomly select someone who got it up correctly, mm -hmm. uh, and they're going to win this little prize pack over here. Uh, again, this is for the U.S. only. Um, the horse is able to cool itself through the sweating process. I think I just gave it away, didn't I? That's all right. The horse is able to cool itself through the process of what? Up to 70 to 75 percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So this one should be super Everybody easy. should get that Everyone one. Everyone this a freebie. Okay. The horse is able to cool itself through the process of what? Um, okay, you've got two minutes to, to answer this one, and it should be very easy for you. 
Um, and in the meantime, we will ask Mike a couple questions. Um, well, uh, let's go back a little bit. We had a few um, few questions here directly on Facebook. People are watching today. Um, what are some of the caustic ingredients that we need to be eyeing, maybe on the lookout for? Are there anything on the labels that we can look at to know that these are caustic, sure. caustic problems? Uh, formalin, F-O-R-A-F-O-R-M-A-L-I-N. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, that's a form of formaldehyde. Mm -hmm. We know what we use that for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any type of an acid, number one, we, we would strictly want to avoid in mm -hmm. itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a lot of folks love to use uh, pine tar. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that's an old remedy that's been around for years and years and years. Uh, but uh, we talked about sealing the foot off, and that's exactly what's going to happen if we coat the uh, foot in pine tar itself. Absolutely. Okay. And there, there are a couple things you can look at the labels, uh, a couple signs that you can see. Sure. Don't, you know, not to get it on your skin. Uh, if it restricts where you can technically put it on the horse. Mm -hmm. uh, if you uh, can't get it on your clothes. Um, if you can't, if it says to avoid the coronary band of the horse, mm -hmm. which is a sensitive area, then that tells you that there's a lot of times there's something caustic in the product. And sometimes your horse can tell you. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, if your horse, you put something on and that horse jerks back and, and, and does not like it. Then, sure. Uh, then that's, a, of course, another sign. Um, and, and since you mentioned that, I will say this, that some of our thrush remedies, if you're treating a thrush problem and that bacteria has eaten into the sensitive part of the foot itself, and if we use something caustic, that, that burns the foot. Mm -hmm. And if we continue to do that, as you just said, the horse is not going to appreciate that very much. And at some point, the horse is going to refuse you doing that. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that over and over. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I've been told that over and over <laughs> as well. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other question we had uh, from Facebook, and I believe our customer service answered it, but I'll go ahead and, and bring it up anyway. Um, as far as a hoof supplement, mm -hmm. uh, if you have a horse who's been on the hoof supplement for several years mm -hmm. and you, has got good quality hoofs, mm -hmm. do you recommend that we continue to use that hoof supplement? Yes, I would. In fact, if you had problems to begin with, and that was the reason you started using the hoof supplement, if you pull that supplement away from the horse, then nine times out of ten, that horse is going to revert back to those existing problems. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Uh, let's do one more question, and then we will announce the winner. Um, let's see. We'll pick, we'll pick a good one here. Uh, during the summer, can coconut oil, is it a good option for dry hoofs? I know that a lot of folks will use coconut oil as well. Uh, uh, the only thing that uh, I would be mindful of is to whether or not it's actually sealing the foot off. Mm -hmm. And if it, any product that would seal the foot off, then I would avoid using it, yes. Well, and uh, uh, I get, you know, and with, with coconut oil, it's not going to have any of the antibacterial antibacterial properties no. right and as we've talked about with those hoof cracks and and so on that develop with the dry hoof mm -hmm. um you know that's a, of course <clears throat> perfect area for bacteria to get into and, and fungus to get into and so uh you're losing some of the benefits of, of some of the other options mm -hmm. i would prefer to use a product that's going to control wet it's going to help with dry and then it's going to help with any type of a bacterial issue an all-in-one product. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right, so we've got a winner, uh, and I've already announced the uh, the answer to this one, but I might as well do it again. Uh, the horse is able to cool itself through the process of sweating. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Through the process of sweating, um, and so we've got Missy Griffith. You are you've been randomly selected as our winner. You're going to receive a T-shirt, a clay, a finish, and our uh, compose here. Uh, so congratulations to you. You can email us at cservice at lifedatalabs.com. Again, that email address has been scrolling somewhere down below me uh, in the little green bar. Uh, just put live giveaway winner, and we'll need your T-shirt size and your address. Uh, and again, just as another reminder, uh, if you have somebody 
messages you us from life data asking for a credit card it is not us it is a fake account uh, just a word of advice from a marketing professional don't ever give your credit card to anyone on Facebook that that is a scam if you don't know them don't press any links sure and so on mm -hmm. so um, okay Mike um, well getting back to the presentation here sure and we we're coming down to the end coming down to the end and as we as we roll down and as we finish up uh, please stick around we're gonna open up open up the floor to more questions sure. and and uh, and uh, of course, we also have the grand prize giveaway we're going to talk about. Um, but we, we're talking about anhydrosis. Mm -hmm. How do we test for this? Uh, solicit the help of your veterinarian. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a test for this. And so if you're, you're thinking that your horse may have some issues, uh, the horse can be injected. And I can't exact, don't remember exactly what the injection is, uh, but your vet will do this. And, it, and if it causes the horse to sweat then you don't have a problem with anhydrosis but if the horse after it has been injected does not sweat then yes it's been confirmed that you have this particular problem then yes all right of course there's visual signs too as well mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. that we've talked about okay uh, what are some of the treatment options well there are many out there corbin there's, there's many, many, many. In fact, you know, they kind of get passed around here and there. And somebody will say, I have a horse that wouldn't sweat, and I gave it this, and I gave this horse this, and this. Uh, some of these are like vitamin E, iodine, sodium chloride, beer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, but there are many. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, whether they all work, I, I doubt it very seriously, you know. It mm -hmm. may have worked in that particular case. Uh, but here at Life Data Labs, through actual blood work that was done in-house here on horses that had this particular problem that were non-sweaters, then Dr. Scott Gravely, who was in charge of this product here, was able to determine some of the missing links in this group of problem horses. Absolutely. And with that research being done, uh, there was field trials that were done, mm -hmm. uh, product given out, tested with these horses that were non-sweaters. And through this process, we have a product yeah. called uh, push it forward. Life Data Sweat Formula. And it's especially for that uh, anhydrotic horse itself, okay? It has key ingredients mm -hmm. uh, that's going to help with uh, sweat production. It's going to help with uh, heat exhaustion. Uh, it's going to help with the process of overheating. Of course, if the horse goes back to sweating and it can sweat, then it's less likely that you're going to have an overheating problem. And then one of the good things that it does is skin restoration. Absolutely. We know that that sweat gland is located within the dermis of that skin layer. So if we can make improvement there, we're improving that aspect and helping alleviate the situation itself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is a pelleted product itself. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a 30-day supply in the bag, and mm -hmm. we're going to give six ounces or one cup of the product per day mm -hmm. to this particular condition. It can be fed year-round, yes, or it could be fed on a seasonal basis. In fact, uh, if you take a look at the uh, label, it's going to tell you sometimes it'll take at least six weeks to get it into the system of the horse before the horse will actually start sweating then. Yeah. That, that's a, you know, an important point there, Mike, is you know, with our products, sweat formula or Ferris formula or mm -hmm. Ferris formula double strength plus your joint, you know, these are nutrition. This is nutrition. Sure. Uh, through that blood research, we found correlations between horses who have you know, bad hoofs and what they're missing or people that, and horses that have anhydrosis mm -hmm. and what they're missing. Sure. But that nutrition's got to build up. Let's do it. it. It doesn't happen overnight. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. You know, the, the, All right. and so, you know, if you are going to do that seasonally, you know, start, start it in the early spring. Let it, let it build That's up. That's right. Start far enough in advance. Get your horse to sweating before you start uh, exercising, competing or whatever. A yes. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, and so, I mean, you can absolutely start, you know, start it now if you have a horse you're struggling with that now. And a lot, but, you know, again, allow it to build up. 
Uh, and again, it's the same thing with Ferris formula, and especially with those dry mm -hmm. hoofs. Um, it's not going to be a, an instant an instant thing. This is a year-around thing, starting that Ferris formula. Uh, it takes, what, about three months, you know, for that initial... Uh, new band of new, growth. New band of, of growth sure, to be right. showing. Mm -hmm. um, and it could take up to a year, depending on the horse, right. uh, to fully grow out that hoof. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that's always something... So I, know, I know it gets hard. We get impatient and we worry because, you know, we're not seeing those results immediately. Um, you know, but like, like I said, those... Uh, those hoof cracks don't heal. They have to be grown out. Uh, that bad hoof has to be grown out. That's right. We, we can't we can't fix it. We can't glue that crack back together. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that we can do to thicken the sole immediately. You know, it takes time. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, Mike, uh, let's open up the floor for some questions. Sure. Uh, so if you have a question, drop it in the comments. If you asked one earlier, you may want to ask it again, just in case, uh, in case we missed it. Um, but in the meantime, let's talk about the giveaway. Absolutely. In fact, it is a good giveaway. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, so any, anytime you get Ferris Formula, it's a good giveaway. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, not only we're going to get Ferris Formula, but for well, basically we have our grand prize giveaway. Mm -hmm. You can go to lifedata.live/win. Again, that has been scrolling down at the bottom. And, um, and, and you can go to there, you sign in with your email address and register. We have a few prompts and questions and things that can, uh, that can help you uh, increase your chances to win. Uh, but we're going to have three winners out of this. Okay. And so again, you... you have until Monday. You have until Monday. So if, the, if, it, if you're watching this later and it's Saturday or Sunday, you can still do this. You just go to that lifedata.live slash win. Uh, and again, this is for the U.S. only. Um, but we have two prize packs, and but we're going to have three winners. Okay, so those three winners are going to win one of those prize packs. Okay. All right. So the first prize pack is going to be the Life Data Sweat Formula. Okay. Good. So if you have an anhyd and horse with anhydrosis, this is this is perfect for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and we're going to give one of these away. Very good. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, the other prize pack is going to be. For those with the dry hoofs and problem with hoofs, mm -hmm. which is going to be a Ferris Formula Double Strength, mm -hmm. a finish, mm -hmm. and a clay. Okay. Which is what we recommend mm -hmm. for those horses. Mm -hmm. Complete, right? complete hoof care. Absolutely. Total hoof care. We're taking we're taking care of the moisture balance mm -hmm. with the hoof with the Ferris finish. We've got the hoof clay for those cracks. Uh, you can just stick that clay right in there. Mm -hmm. This is a porous clay, so it's not going to block oxygen. Mm -hmm. And it contains a lot of the same ingredients that the Farragut finish does. You can use those together. You're going to apply the uh, hoof clay first, and then you're going to cover the entire hoof and the finish, mm -hmm. as we saw Mike do earlier. And then from a nutritional standpoint, we're going to begin growing that hoof out internally. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this bag right here is a 60-day supply. Uh, so uh, that will have... A couple people win that prize back. We're going to go live Tuesday to announce the winner. 2 p.m. Central Time? 2, 2 p.m. Central Time. It's U.S. Central Time. Um, and we are, um, and we'll announce the winner then. Uh, and we have the secret code. Almost, almost forgot. And the secret code is Farrier's Finish. And what will that it's do? All, all one word that is going to almost double your entries. So all those little prompts that you get when you go to that link, I think there's, you know, visit visit this page, share with a friend, follow us on Facebook, join our next event. All, all of those are going to increase your chances to win, but the one that's going to increase it the most is this, and you can do them all. So definitely do them all, it's a, uh, and it will increase your chances to win. Um, and so, uh, again, I just talked about doing the next live event. We do have our next live event scheduled. Mm -hmm. I knocked over my iPad there. Uh-oh. Uh, our next live event is going to be in August. I believe we've got a, a little prompt here we can put up for you. It's going to be August 19th, preventing hoof abscesses. Mm -hmm. Which that's a very common problem as well. Absolutely. We, we always get you know. questions on hoof abscesses. I believe we actually had a question today on hoof abscesses. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, we're going to talk about preventing them. You know, we talked about preventing is better than treating. Absolutely. Uh, so we're going to dive into what is a hoof abscess, what can we do to prevent it, what are some signs possibly of one developing. And uh, so again, that's going to be August 19th. 
Uh, the link is available right now. You can go to that link that's uh, right there, lifedata.live slash FB event, uh, and just place yourself as going. And we hopefully you can join us on the 19th of sure. August. And there's nothing worse to have to deal with besides laminitis than a hoof abscess. Absolutely. Especially if it ruptures back in the heel bulbs, back between the bulbs themselves. Absolutely. You've got problems there. And some of these uh, some of these dry hoofs can be a little bit prone to those hoof That's abscesses. That's right. Of course, uh, you, you know, we, we think that we only have thrush when it's wet, mm -hmm. but that's not the case. Oh, absolutely not. You know, or we have an abscess only when it's wet. That's not the case, okay? Absolutely. Um, all right, so let's open the floor up to questions. We've got a couple in here right now. Um, all right, so the first one, Mel would like to ask, so what hoof dressing is recommended? That, that would be the... Well, we're kind of a biased here ourselves. Absolutely. So we're going to highly recommend Ferris Finish. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to recommend yeah. the Ferris Finish. Yeah. Um, now, the Ferris Finish was part of an independent study as well. It was, it? yeah. In fact, Dr. Sue Kempson out of Edinburgh mm -hmm. in Scotland uh, done a test on the finish. Mm -hmm. And if you never use finish with dry feet, you're going to love Ferris Finish. In fact, with only two to three applications, you're going to see a difference in uh, the, the hoof capsule itself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, it's not going to heal the crack by any means, mm -hmm. but it's going to make that hoof wall more supple, pliable, and movable. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're after. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and like we, like we said, we, all, you know, we recommend, of course, feeding that double strength because the hoofs won't. Mm -hmm. won't uh, cure themselves. So the finish and then the double strength, and of course you can also use the clay. Uh, that, that's the package that of course we recommend for these horses. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, of course the Ferris finish, but the Ferris formula double, uh, double strength or Ferris formula also has been tested independently. Sure. Uh, with, with, the, um, with it being published in the veterinary journal. So you can actually look that up and, and read mm -hmm. that for yourself. Right. We're the only hoof supplement that has been scientifically proven through that mm -hmm. research. And that and that research published, yes. Absolutely. Right. Um, all right, so the next question. How well does the Ferris finish absorb into the sole and frog of the foot? Both my horses are on dry pasture and are barefoot. Uh, it does a good job in entering the hoof wall and the sole. In fact, one of the main ingredients that's in Ferris finish is tea tree oil. Mm -hmm. Uh, as far as the, and it's an antimicrobial, and then it also has some added uh, tamed iodine that's been added to that as far as the antimicrobial. And yes, it will penetrate, yes. Mm -hmm. Now we, uh, we do recommend, uh, you know, well I guess right now we're dealing with dry, but if you are dealing with the wet conditions, because it can also be used for the soft hoofs that develop in the wet conditions, uh, we do recommend letting the horse just sit for just a little bit to, mm -hmm. to allow it to dry mm -hmm. sure. uh, before turning the horse back yeah, out. Into give, the give it about 30 minutes uh, to be absorbed mm -hmm. and then turn the horse out then. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, all right. So uh, let me switch over, get some more time for more questions to come in through there. And then in the meantime, I'm going to come back to some of these questions we had uh, from our Facebook. Um, all right, well, this one, you know, we kind of talked about it before, but how, how often does the hoof dressing need to be applied and how much is too much? For example, if it rains on Tuesday and then doesn't rain until Saturday, should hoof dressings be applied in between those days? If you're using Farius Finish, it can be used every day without any detrimental effects. Mm -hmm. If we're under extreme harsh conditions, then I would use it at least every other day until we get beyond that situation in itself. Mm -hmm. If everything is good, uh, weather is normal, we don't have any type of a bacterial issue such as thrush going on, use it at least once a week. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're using a product that's highly caustic, I would caution you about using it too frequently. And not only would I caution you, but your horse is going to caution you as well, especially if you're treating some sensitive tissue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I keep hitting this table. 
All right, so um, the next question, I battle the in-between life. Too much moisture with our clay soil and then not enough as well. Mm -hmm. Not to mention drying out in the sand arenas for our barrel racing season. Mm -hmm. She is shod all the way around. How can I find a good in-between? Well, fair finish would be your good in-between. Uh, it's going to help you to monitor, uh, to regulate that moisture within the hoof capsule to keep it pliable and supple, and that it doesn't matter if it's wet or if it's dry, mm -hmm. either one. Mm -hmm. So it, it will transition to your particular environment then. Absolutely. All right. Uh, this one is a little bit of a failure question here. Uh, best method to trim the sole when it's so dry and hard, hoof knife just skips off it. I've used nippers, a sharpened clench, cutter and hammer, etc. I lived in the desert and haven't seen feet like this summer. I have a couple corrective jobs coming due that I used Equipack and sole support on and can't wait to see how it's affected them. Fair's finish. Fair's finish. Mm -hmm. The entire foot and especially concentrate on the sole and the hoof wall. Fair's mm -hmm. finish. It, it, it will make a difference. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I know we had um, you know, a lot of fairs in the Arizona area uh, you know, who, who use it religiously. Oh, sure. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, we are close to coming. We're coming to an end. Um, I don't think we have any new questions here. So if you've got one, throw one in as quickly as possible because we're about to end. Um, don't forget about the next live event. Again, that is August 19th, Preventing Hoof Abscesses. Uh, we hope you can make that one. Uh, we look forward to that one. And uh, like I said, we, we always get a lot of attention on the hoof abscesses, mm -hmm. a lot of questions regarding that. So that is going to be a really good one. Um, also, don't forget to about our grand prize giveaway. Uh, so that's just a perfect opportunity not only to try the products, but to try them for free. Uh, and so you can join us Tuesday, this Tuesday at 2 o'clock. And again, if you're watching this on a Saturday or Sunday uh, or even Monday, you've got time to enter. So uh, enter that. Um, and in the meantime, thank you to everybody who joined us today. Uh, we know that uh, those dry hosts can be a scary situation and a frustrating situation. Uh, so if you have any other questions, if you have any other problems, feel free to message us. Uh, contact us and we'll be happy to, uh, to talk to you and see if we can help you resolve those issues. Sure. Uh, well, until next time, I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Mm -hmm. Yep. And thank you for joining us. And like Corbin says, we hope each of you have a, a great, wonderful weekend. Yep. By all means. Thank you.